Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to match day two, game two. Tunisia taking on Zambia from Kenya's capital, Nairobi, Kenya, at the historic Nyayo National Stadium. The teams making their way out of the tunnel. You can see on your left is a Tunisia team, and on your right is a Zambia team. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, as a build up to this match, uh, this is a placement fixture going into the fifth and sixth uh, placement uh, final to be played on Sunday. For Tunisia, they are here courtesy of a loss that was given to them by Zimbabwe. They lost that match in the last three minutes of that game, 19-18. Zambia were also here courtesy of a loss. They lost their game, 26-14 to Madagascar, who are not even more than 24 hours into the capital of Kenya, Nairobi. This is a team, this is a very good placement, a very good fixture for the under-20s who are enjoying a good fixture in Nairobi. With the lift-off of the COVID-19 protocols, these teams are making due of their engagement into sports activities. For those who wish to join us, the, the games are happening at the Nyayo National Stadium. The next fixture will be our semi-finals fixtures. As we go into this fixture, ladies and gentlemen, placement, you can see that's the Zambia team taking their positions, will be going into the national anthems. The center referees. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to ask each and every one of you to be upstanding for the national anthem of Zambia. We'll start off with the Zambia national anthem. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's remain upstanding for the national anthem of Tunisia.
Merci beaucoup. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the match. Ladies and gentlemen, the match of Faris, match the, the center referee for this match will be Talent Gandiwa. Uh, right there in um, view is a Talent Gandiwa. Uh, very experienced referee will be assisted by Zaid Isaacs and Kenya's Noreen Liosi. As we go into the team ships, we have Tunisia, we have Tata, Azozi, Baya, Baya, Hadani, Youssef, Benrijeb, Abid, Ali, Lassi, Riahi, Hamdad, Hamdui, Mahdi, who's also the captain, Bahri, Ayari, and Grammy. Don't forget their replacements. We have Teacher and Rulaz. For Zambia, we have Ibrahim, Silwamba, Kabelengele, Haba, Habasimbi, Mwemba, Chate, Musonda, Simpasa, Sichula, Mulenga, Mutonga, Mulenga the captain, Chalewa, Zulu, and Lukwesa. The match about the kickoff will be coming from the Zambia side being kicked into the Tunisia side. That's the center referee, Talent Gandiwa. Talent Gandiwa ensuring that everything is intact, time is right. You do not want to start a minute earlier, a minute late. Talent Gandiwa there confirming with his uh, other officials on when they are ready to go. And talent confirms ready? that we are ready, confirming with all sides of it. And ladies and gentlemen, match day two, game number two. And uh, there is a whistle. Let's start, ladies and gentlemen, 10. Uh, we have Mwila Mulenga kicking it high all the way into the 22 of Tunisia. And they collect and send it back all the way back. Please stop him, okay? Stop him for now. Okay, listen, guys. Listen. Listen to me. Listen. Mark is here. Half a meter. Half a meter. Hold on. This is my first one. The first one is on me. Hold on. We maintain this gap all the time, okay? Just hold. Hold him. Line out, and you can see Kinorin uh, Liosi there ensuring that the line out is coming out from the right position. Very good contest up in the air, but uh, Zambia come out as the most successful of it. They're able to collect. I'm not sure the referee calls for an infringement uh, by Tunisia, and it'll be a uh, scrum down. Left my mark. Okay. Yeah. Left my mark. <coughs> You're getting this much alive on K24 Plus and on the Rugby Freak Facebook uh, page. Okay, hold on. Get up. Step a bit. Get up. Step a bit. Step. 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 Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah good. Let's go. Cut! No. No bind. For the few. Yeah? Let's go. Cut! Set. Hold. Very good, a very good, a very good scrum, but uh, Tunisia showcasing the power of the forwards, but uh, Zambia able to kick out of danger as the ball is sent all the way, it's all it's sent all the way back. Tunisia collecting the ball and trying to push all the way to the halfway. Uh, it's going to be a very tactical. It's going to be a very tactical game. Tunisia. <laughs> I'm looking at Bayedina Bid and looking at uh, Ali Jlasi, who was very instrumental last week 
Unfortunately, they didn't get out Number to the win. There was an infringement. There was a, an offside position, I'm guessing. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're joining us, the Nairobi weather, we are at uh, 26 degrees, and the humidity is at 57%. Okay. Can the wind speeds? <laughs> I didn't get that. I think it's at 26. Yeah. It takes kilometers. 18. It's at 18 kilometers per hour. Ladies and gentlemen, joining me in commentary, I am your host, Willie Wex from Nairobi, Kenya, and joining me all the way, all the way from Uganda is Ernest Akorebi Rungi. Ernest, take it away. Yeah, thank you very much, Willie Wex. Well, we've seen an end to end contest between both teams, especially Tunisia, who have uh, managed to get the territory game right with uh, their fielding, but then also with uh, their finding touch. And we could see that, that kick that bounced just right in front of, of fullback. Redson Luquesa uh, handing them position, handing them the line out feed at uh, just outside the 22 meter territory. And uh, we could uh, also see that both teams have uh, also tried to size themselves up in the, in the contact zone. And I think this is going to be a very entertaining game of rugby. We expect a very tactical uh, rugby game as uh, the lineout is being brought in by Mohamed Azozi. I can remember him from last week's fixture. Uh, I've seen Zambia using some of the Uganda tactics. There was the ball was uh, dropped, but it went backwards, so the referee continues play. It's a very good carry right there by Adem Grammy going into contact. The ball is all the way out to the back, so you can see the winger right there. <laughs> Elias Ayari, who was, uh, if I'm not wrong, my man of the match last week. They've gotten an infringement. There was a high tackle right there. And uh, we are closer. <laughs> I'm looking at Talent Gandiwa, informing them of where to make the kick from. They're deep inside the Zambia 22 with the line out being a Tunisia line out. Ernest, how do they take this play? Opting to go for, for the line out as opposed to kicking for points. As, as you could see, some consultation there is a show of intent from the Tunisians uh, against Zambia. They are sizing them up at, uh, at the line out. The first line out, which was thrown by Zambia, was a good contest, but lost forward by, by Tunisia. This one is an attacking line out, and they jump at two but throw the ball straight out to the number six uh, position, and that is in uh, Beandina bid. And they have been able to set up a driving mall. It's rolling and surely will be going all the way over the whitewash and that should be the first try of the game by Tunisia scored by Mohamed Ben Haj Youssef uh, set this try as simple and easy as they come line out win the line out set up a driving mall and you're over the whitewash fantastic fantastic try fantastic try as you had indicated you can just look at a, a replay of it you can see that they created a mall and they pushed all the way they pushed the, the mall yeah. all the way <laughs> and he was able to hold on to the bulk Mohamed and Haji Youssef and he was able to go over the whitewash for the first try of the game and as it stands ladies and gentlemen Tunisia leading five Zambia nil with a conversion to come Ernest as you indicated, uh, Tunisia showing their intent going into this match. They're showing that they they feel they they feel like uh, they are they ought to have been into the semi-finals, considering they lost their fixture 19 to 18 against Zimbabwe. Yeah, it was a try scored about like two minutes. The end of the game, they came from behind. The comeback looked to have been complete, having taken the lead with just about like ten minutes to go. But Zamb Zimbabwe held on and were able to score the try that that awarded them the game. And with that fantastic, very good kick there by uh, fly half, uh, by by fly half Mohamed Riyahi, uh, that takes the lead to seven zero. It's a uh, Tunisia have shown their enter. They're not going to leave anything to chance this time against uh, the, South Af the Southern Africans uh, in Zimbabwe, who are neighbors uh, uh, against Zambia, who are neighbors with Zimbabwe, who got the win against them at the death last last time on Saturday. So you're saying this one is a battle of uh, a not trying to revenge against the South. <laughs> yeah, I could say I could say yeah, they are trying to assert their influence very early on in the game, and we saw how earlier the way Uganda nearly lost it against. Uh, against Cote d'Ivoire, Tunisia will not want to make that same mistake and they are going for the jugular right away. A uh, very good kick uh, of the restart by, by Zambia, but then the chess, uh, in as much as it was good, did not get control of the ball and it was lost forward. So that's another scrum feed for, for Tunisia uh, just outside their 22. We have about five or so minutes that have been played uh, in this game, second kick off of the match. 
and the first thing on Tunisia's mind is secure this scrum down and then we can get the front foot uh, in playing. Uh, hook, uh, scrum of Mohamed Ali Yassi. There's going to be a reset there for some stability. Uh, Italian Gandiwa needs some stability at the scrum. He says do not shove Ali, especially to the Tunisian uh, loose head. But this ball goes out. I could see the the back line set up in a way that shows that it will be going to the boot. But it can be deceptive as they choose to run, knowing that the Zambian defense is uh, is shaping up to receive that kick. But let's see what they use this ball for. Mohamed Ali Lassi, straight off the base, sends it to his number 15, who sends an upper nanda straight into the hands of winger. Straight into the hands of winger. Fred Mutonga. Fred Mutonga was uh, very, very clinical in scoring tries for Zambia in the last game in as much as he didn't get them the victory, but it was a very good performance from him. And that will be a penalty won by Zambia for not releasing, for, for diving into the rack, for not staying on his feet. Uh, Benadina, Benadina Bid not staying on, on his feet in that contest at the breakdown, attempting the juggle, which gives Zambia a penalty just at the 10-meter line. Zambia with an opportunity to try and reduce the deficit with Mwila Mulenga taking on the kicking duty. He's, uh, he's been instrumental and uh, I'm, I'm happy for them to try and uh, see how well. I'm not sure whether they're brothers with Chilese Mulenga, who's also the team captain, sharing a very good son name there. But uh, as, go, as we go into this, uh, some sort of composure. He's kicking from the right foot. Uh, very good placement of the ball. Um, he has almost uh, 30 meters to kick, 30 to 40 meters, 40, 40 plus meters. Not, not, not the best of kicks, not the best of kicks. And Tunisia able to just pick it up and start the run. I'm not sure why they opted to kick immediately because uh, there's still some distance in between them and the, the Zambians. But you can see the reason as uh, Zambia try to hold on to, try to hold on to the ball. Back, back, back. Very good uh, flow of the ball. It's taken all the way to the box. Not sure about that pass, but uh, the very waves play on. The Tunisia continue with the possession. Uh, Tunisia is right there with them. With every try, uh, with every carry of the ball, there's someone, an opponent, to hold on to you, to keep you at your feet, not to enable you to gain more ground. Zambia holding on to the possession. Very good collection of the ball, and uh, but he was stopped on his tracks. Kelvin Sichula has been playing very good at the nine position. There is an infringement, an infringement right there by Tunisia and not releasing player. Ernest, how do you take this one? Zambia have uh, shipped up very well in the attack. They're playing the one three three one formation, a ball carrier and two players in attack. We, uh, with them in attack, they have uh, 13 men. They have 12 men uh, to attack with the ball, but then Tunisia is smart enough not to commit men to that breakdown. And so they are attacking 12 men against 13 men for, for Tunisia. But uh, we could see there that the contest at the breakdown was legal, but the tackler needs to roll away as Mwila Mulenga finds very good touch for, for Zambia, just in good territory to attack from another set piece and then also get into their structure and uh, get some front foot on, on, on this subsequent play. Very good line out thrown to the back of the lineup, but then it's not gathered by the jumper and the position is turned over into the hands of Mohamed Azozi carrying into the Zambia half. Mohamed Ali Lassi playing a quick ball and Mohamed Riahi puts it to touch just outside the 22. But the offside for a player being ahead of the kicker at the point when the kick was made. So we'll have to stay onside. Yeah, please. Oh, that's that's offside at the breakdown. And it was uh, Mwila Mulenga who has been judged for having been yeah, yeah, offside at that kick. He crept forward at, at, that, uh, at that offside line that was formed at the breakdown. And Mohamed Riahi opts to go for touch, gives it a good hit. And yeah. he finds the closest, you can see the smile on Riahi's face, he finds the closest uh, mark that he could have possibly got, five meters. And certainly, Mohamed Azozi will be looking to replicate line. that line out and driving more 
that the, that the Tunisians used to score their first try of the game. This one is Zambia will try and uh, try and hold them. Not uh, I'm not sure whether they'll commit into the line out. Because if you commit, then you have no good landing. And once they form a mall, it's right at the five yard. They'll be guaranteed for a try. So let's see how this one goes. As you said, Mohamed Azozi, very good, very not clinical. Not clinical, they've lost the ball forward. As you say, <laughs> had they gotten it right, they will have been a very dangerous place to handle it. And I'm sure that kick was done by Mwila Mulenga. Very good, very good follow through of that attack. And uh, as you can see, <laughs> very good hold of the ball. Tunisia trying to ensure that they keep it. But that player from Zambia may need to roll away first before the referee puts his eyes on him. <laughs> and it's called for an infringement. Good carry of the ball by Tunisia. Good flow. Very good carry by Hossem. Hossem Tata. Ball is out. The ball is out by Jelassi. And he's all the way backwards. The referee calls it backwards. And it's infringement by Tunisia. Who was able to intercept it and uh, <laughs> talent uh, Gandiwa ensuring that uh, everything is intact as it calls for the scrum. Uh, and it's, uh, as, uh, as it stands, it's uh, less than a quarter of the game has been played. Zambia looking to shape the game because uh, they were not as clinical in the first five minutes, but towards the last nine minutes, they've been great at it. Tunisia, on the other hand, trying to control, the, to maintain their momentum as the scrum is being set up. Kelvin Sichula is ready to place the ball in. Anist, what do you have to say? Both teams are playing the same strategy in attack, the same structure. It's a 1-3-3-1 one, three, three, one formation. And we can see the Tunisians are half a, a step further than, than, the, than the Zambians by playing that plus one pass. The first uh, receiver of the ball passes into on to the next person to carry. But then their scrum needs to be a little bit more patient as they are pushing earlier than, uh, than, the, set, than the set instructions for the ref. Uh, you push early, that's uh, early binding, and you will get uh, the free kick against you. But uh, Mwila Mulenga needs to ensure that this ball stays into touch uh, once once he kicks it because it was just a free kick and he sends it straight through the middle for the Tunisian backfield to deal with and there goes Yes Ayari who puts it to the boat. Does he find touch? No, he doesn't. Finds the hands of Redson Luquesa who now will counter-attack. Cuts back inside and beats two defenders. Carries just well outside the 22. Is brought down and now there's a reset play. A man isolated there in Dims Kavengele. And there's a contest at that yeah, breakdown. But yet again, two. the turnover, the, the, the jackal is legal, but his teammate needs to roll away for a fair contest on both sides. And this is a penalty in kickable territory for Mwila Mulenga. This time, hopefully, he will be able to convert. Yeah. Mwila Mulenga having a zero of one uh, in the, from his boot, looking to capitalize on this one. The other one, the kick was not well placed. Uh, he hit it directly, going straight into the ground. He may need to place the ball in an angle that enables elevation once he kicks it from below. I'm not still sure about the placement of that kick because the ball is facing upwards, not projected towards the, uh, the uprights. The placement, the direction is okay. Uh, but now let's see if he will be able to give it enough of, of the power. The direction seems to be fine, but let's see how much of power he will give it. And that's a beautiful <laughs> kick by, by Mwila Mulenga to get Zambia's scoreboard ticking. At, at uh, just 16 minutes played, the score now stands at 7-3 in favor of the Tunisian team. Ladies and gentlemen, you can see a repeat of that to just get on why there was a penalty that was given. There was <laughs> lack of rolling away on time. And uh, as you say, Mwila Mulenga ensured that it went straight through the uprights. So now the game is a restart of the game again. Oh, that was a blunder. I thought he would kick that ball. I expected. The Tunisia, Tunisia, uh, Benadine Abid had a very good curry. <laughs> Not forgetting that Ben Reb has a very good curry also. He was very instrumental in their comeback last week because he was one of the first players who was sent to the sin bin. And then he made a very good recovery of the team. Very good defense right there by Zambia. But Tunisia are ensuring that they stay at the door and keep knocking. 
very good ball carry, very good goal carry by Mohamed Khardani. And not the referee has informed the player to release the ball. He, he thought he was in a very good position, but not so. Here, one offload, and you can see Tunisia are close. Tunisia are close. They're now in the five yet. Let's look at uh, how they control this one. <laughs> Players are being tackled left, right, and center. Zambia doing their best to hold. There was a, there's a high tackle. There's a high tackle. Though right before that, there was an obstruction. But I'm guessing the referee safety comes first. <laughs> so let's see how this one goes. Tunisia keep pushing, keep knocking. Zambia trying hard. They'll go back to where the penalty was drawn from. Honest. Yeah. Malek, uh, Captain Malek El Madi could have uh, passed the ball back inside on an offload for an Number easy one. try, but he chose to hold Number on. And Tunisia, Number Tunisia's one. try scoring opportunity went begging. But they maintained possession sure. and they kept knocking at the door. And they were able to get that advantage for the high tackle just in front of the uprights. Yeah, and uh, it, it's an easy point, easy kickable point there by, for, for Mohamed Riahi to extend, to extend Tunisia's lead to just again at uh, a try, a converted try. But Tunisia are playing a much quicker ball and they are keeping uh, the Zambians uh, on the back foot, retreating backwards as they as they attempt to to hold to hold the attack. I, I believe this decision uh, now the placement. Uh, this is the difference of placement uh, of the ball. I was looking at because uh, if we look at uh, what uh, Aimena Hamdui is doing compared to what uh, Mula Mulenga was doing with the Ninis, that's what I was saying. The ball is placed looking straight into the upright, but hey, everyone has their own tactic. The most important thing at the end of the day is whether you score the plus three points. And also this one, I'm looking at it, and it's that it was informed by their last visit into the five yard where they lost a line out. So there was no reason for them to repeat the same. Tunisia, ladies and gentlemen, courtesy of Amen Hamdoui, Hamdoui, are able to extend the lead with that conversion. And the, and the scores as it stands is Tunisia 10, Zambia 3. Ernest, what does uh, Zambia have to do going into? We finish the first first half of the half. That's 20 minutes played going into the second 20. What do we expect from both Tunisia and Zambia? More of the same as, as, on the, as, as, as at the start. It's the first water break of this game. But it's more of the same. Uh, teams are playing the same strategy, but with the little tweaks, uh, especially in the middle. Zambia and, and Tunisia playing the 1-3-3-1 one, three, three, one formation. Three, two pods of forwards in the middle and then one on the outside. But Tunisia are able to find the spaces on the outside, courtesy of how quickly they can move that ball uh, through the hands. I, I think uh, Zambia will need to be more clinical in defense, more, more I could say, disciplined in defense to, to avoid giving away easy penalties to Tunisia, who have shown their intent uh, in both points and in also going to the corner for, 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 for the line-out. Tunisia, on the other hand, will uh, there's been a similar yeah. infringement uh, from the start, and I think uh, Talin Gandiwa will be warning them at, at that point that the contest that the breakdown needs to be legal so once you've made the tackle you need to roll away quickly and then your players are able to make that that jack or that contest for for the turnover at the breakdown but uh still in my eyes uh, a bit of a balanced affair just uh teams having exchanges in uh in dominance uh, for these first 20 minutes it's a very well placed uh, game as we we take into the water breaker <laughs> that is uh, i can see noreen leosi there also ensuring that she gets her water break uh, alongside her compatriots right there with the center referee talent gandiwa and zaidi sucks uh, as we proceed back into the game will be a restart of uh, the fixture from uh, the halfway kickoff after that conversion attempt that was successful the penalty the, the, the points attempt uh, by tunisia which was successful ready Next fixture right after this one at around 1400 hours will be Namibia taking on uh, the home town boys uh, Kenya. Oh, right inside the 22, ladies and gentlemen, Mohammed Ben Hadja Youssef knocks the ball right inside, right after kickoff. It was a very good kick, he had it, but I'm guessing he just moved his eyes off the ball for a second. A uh, small uh, loss of concentration there by Mohamed Ben, Haj, by Mohamed ben Haj Youssef. 
to give Zambia a, a set piece just inside their 22. But uh, like we've always been saying uh, from the start, the team Cut. is most vulnerable just after they have scored. And uh, some uh, some lack of concentration there, hands with no pressure, hands Six. free possession to, to Zambia. And we now have a scrum feed there by Kelvin Sishula, who sends it out to his eighth man, Miracle Simpasa, who carries onto the blind side, bumps off the captain Malik Almadi, and sets up just close the five meter line. Another strong carry this time by the tight five. And now we have the ball going out to. Charles Mwemba who sends it out wide. The fullback is in the space. He has broken the line. Redson Mukwesa will be scoring Zambia's first try of the game just to the left of the uprights. And Zambia, through Redson Mukwesa, have had a response to Tunisia's uh, uh, dominance in this first quarter. It is 10-8 in favor of Tunisia conversion to come. Ladies and gentlemen, as you <laughs> my co-commentator here, Ernest, had the mic and he took it as with the hold of the possession, Ernest Redson Luquesa was able to clear the defender as if the defender wasn't even there stopping him. This is very good considering with that infringement right after the score, right after the score by Tunisia, Zambia were able to respond. Right now we have Mwila Mulenga, Mwila Mulenga taking on the conversion duty and he's, he's one of two as it stands. Uh, hopefully that this one, he's able to convert it. As we said, his tactic is different from uh, what is uh, being exhibited by the Tunisia kicker. Uh, very good posture. Ball is straight up. Let's look at how it goes. Ah, uh, As I was telling you, I'm not happy with this placement of the ball but as it stands uh, Tunisia have a two point lead with 10 points Zambia has eight Ernest looking into this second half of the first half are we are we expecting uh, a tricky affair both teams uh, having been rattled because there's no team that has shown proper dominance whereby they maintain it every team is showing that we are here for a game so how is your look going into the next half of this first half. The, the, these two teams are playing in the toughest of conditions. The, the sun is just above above their head, so it's it's an unforgiving and scorching heat. So the, the difference will be late in this game, how uh, conditioned and how the how, how much the S and C coaches for, for the two teams have put in in the work. We can see that they're giving it their best in the early parts of the game, but are they able to maintain this tempo all the way through the 80 minutes? As we see a very strong carry there by eighth man. Benadina bid to set Tunisia going into the into the Zambia half and another carry a line break continues to set Tunisia moving forward There's some space on the open side ball has been lost backwards and Zambia can now defend on the front foot but well secured by by Tunisia they are just inside their own half Benadina bid playing uh, scrum of duties sends it out wide to Mohamed Riahi who kicks it straight into touch and he will be, he will be ruining him, his, his, himself for, for that for that error, that unforced error that has not had a gain in territory and possession for his team. The clinch of fist right there, <laughs> the clinch of fist just shows this. I mean, now Mohamed Ria is not happy with himself as we go, as we go into the line out being sent in by Lukundo Silwambi. Was it successful? No. No corner advantage. And the ball is lost uh, to towards the. Tunisia, Tunisia able to hold on to the ball. I'm guessing we're still playing advantage, but since it was just from, from a line out and not an infringement, eh? the game proceeds. The game proceeds. The old wish to go for a box kick. Use the ball, there's the ball. You trapped him there. There's the ball, use it. It's kicked high. It goes backwards. That is the unfavorable bounce of the oval rugby ball, as you're told. Oh, very good, very good push, very good push right there by Miracle Simpasa going into contact. And there's an infringement. No, ah. no, no. Tattoo, Tunisia have cleaned up their, their first infringement that they were suffering for the tackler not rolling. And after a strong carry by Miracle Simpasa, he's isolated at the wing and the turnover has been made. Taco, tackler rolled away. And you can see there, Miracle Simpasa isolating the being isolated by the defense. He's brought down by Ahmed Abdai, and his opposite number, Benadina Bid, is there 
to make the turnover and give possession to his team Tunisia to find touch of this penalty. That's a very good kick well inside the, the Zambia 22. And I think Tunisia this time will be going for the line out plus a driving mall and then after sucking in the defense they can send it out wide to their backs to play. Very good review of it from uh, my colleague here, Anesta, who's, who's been very instrumental today with the, his input and a uh, uh, very good understanding of the game of rugby. Uh, with this line out, Tunisia, as it's insinuated, that Tunisia will be going uh, through Mohamed Azozi, who was very clinical last week uh, on Saturday with the line outs. They, there they have it. Goes out, and it was a very clinical and very clean. As you stated, they'll go for a rolling mall. And they're able to push, ha <laughs> ha, ladies and gentlemen. If you can't stop a mall, you can't stop a try. And there it goes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic, fantastic run of the mall by Tunisia. Ernest, <laughs> how was how good was that? That was very simple and easy. And you can see the smiles on their faces. Uh, we yet to get uh, the try scorer there, but as easy as it can be, a line out ball goes out wide to the backs. To, to the forward at the back of the lineout, that was a four ball, and then they drove it all the way. The ball is stuck in the middle of the lineout, and I think at that point it should be uh, Mohamed Ben Mohamed Salah Ben Ben Reb Mohamed Salah, more popularly known as a footballer, but there's a Mohamed Salah Ben Reb on uh, this Tunisian team to score uh, Tunisia's uh, second try of the game. Same same style as the first one, of a driving mall, of a rolling mall at, at the lineout, and now we have Ayman Hamdai to give us the extra two points and send the score to 15-8 to 17-8, well outside the touching distance of Zambia, but still early on uh, in this in, in this second uh, placement match of the Rugby Africa Under-20 Bats Trophy. As, 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 as I was informing you, Ernest, I prefer his placement of the ball compared to his co co colleague on the other side. Kicks in high, and ladies and gentlemen, you can see the flags of Zaid, Isaacs, and Noreen Liosi going up, confirming that is an extended lead. Tunisia take the lead to a 17 points against eight by Zambia. There is a replay of the driving mall that was set up, as Anis had informed you. Once this one is set and you do not stop it, be ready to collect a try from your box. And then there is a repeat of the kick that was well executed by Aliem Ailem Hamdui and the kickoff kickoff was well done by Zambia and now it's very well held there by Ali Jalasi who offsets it all the way back are they able to kick it <laughs> not sure very, very good touch finder there on the reception after that try scored by Mohamed Kadani uh, in number five. Yeah, right here, right here. But and uh, that kick by uh, Mohamed Riyahi finding touch uh, after being 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 stuck in their training room. But after this restart, Zambia can now uh, throw a good ball and the contest in the air. It was a two ball, but Tunisia won the contest in the air and now they can attack from well within their own area. And there we have Usman Baya breaking the first tackle, looking for that offload, finds his fly half. Mohamed Riyahi was brought down just outside the 22. Another strong carry by Mohamed Kadani, but he's isolated and the turnover will be won by Zambia's hooker Lukundo Silwamba to halt the Zambian attack. And they've been penalized for being offside and uh, trying to trying to slow down that quick play by the Zambians, who this time have not gone for touch. There's an isolated ball carrier. He's strong enough to stay on his feet, Lukundo Silwamba, and wait for his teammates to come close by. And now to the Bucks. Move, move. There's the ball. Well secured at the half point, but the player needs to roll for that contest at the breakdown. Yet again, Tunisia, they need to roll away for the contest at the breakdown after Kelvin Sichula had lost it forward uh, on his pickup. Is Muila Mulenga going to go for points or are they going for touch? Yes, they are going for points, but this time it's Fred Mutonga that's going to give it a close to 50 meter thump uh, for, for points to send Zambia into the double points. I hope that he does not miss his leg day at the gym because this one requires a very heavy, heavy, heavy hit. Heavy hit. Getting his placement right, getting his setup very well done. He's ready there to go for it. It's right at the center. If he gets the calculation right, 
it should be straight through the uprights. Fred Mutonga, it is, it is high, but it goes wide. It goes extremely wide. Boy, go all the way. Yeah, we saw the 18 uh, kilometer per hour wind gust across the pitch uh, in, in, in the weather, in the current weather conditions here at the stadium. And while uh, Fred Mutonga gave it a good hit, he did not account very well for that, for that wind direction. And the wind direction uh, got the better of, 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 his of his attempt for points. And Tunisia can now exit their round 22 with a drop goal, which uh, in this case, they only need to ensure that it finds touch first before it goes straight out. And this is an opportunity for Zambia to restart with a counter attack. This goes straight, Riai's kick goes straight to fullback. Redson Luquesa who scored the first try and he sends a strong up and under that is well gathered by, by Mohamed Ali Liasi on to try scorer Mohamed Kadani who secures the ball just outside the 10. Quick ball to Mohamed Riahi who sends just a cheeky cross kick out. It's a 1v1 situation. That's a reckless challenge in the air, I could say, by the chaser. Hold on. But centre referee on. Uh, Talen Gandiwa says. Uh, we shall have a line out, and uh, five, oh, there will be some consultation well, and a substitution there. But yeah. uh, consultation first for that chess because there's a player in the air, and the, ch the, and the chaser of the ball needed Shoots. to have uh, ensured Mille. the safety Mille. Mille. of the kick. Yeah, I was happy with that. I saw it going in. And yeah, you could see the captain calling, uh, reminding the referee that does that charge there. No, you knocked it on there. But uh, Zambia will uh, have have lost possession of that ball, lost forward in the air, and it's going to be a scrum uh, for for Tunisia just uh, across the half in the Zambia territory. Uh, and as I was looking at that play, we could get a repeat of it. What I saw was more of none of the players was really looking at the ball as it went up as the, there was more concern of the opponent than concern of the ball. But as we go into the retail of this one, we have uh, Mohamed Al Jilasi with an opportunity to, to place the ball. No, no, not yet, not yet. They have to reset. That scrum has to be reset. I'm looking at the front row of Tunisia. Tata, Azozi and Bayak have to reset it well, especially I think it's on the side of Tata where there was no correct placement with his opposite number so we have less than eight minutes to play into the first half the referee is calling <laughs> both yeah, the bind is not well being well executed there. and uh, both teams just need to agree on how well to do it you're getting direction both from talent gandiwa when it's on bind, it's from his direction, not from your own insinuation. You wait for his direction, and you're able to reset it. Uh, looking at the front row of Sekiu, Ibrahim, Lukundo, Silwamba, and Dimas Kabelenge, Kabengele for, for Zambia. Going straight against uh, Kitata Azozi and Bayer. This one was well set, and uh, we have our very own uh, Jelassi having a good placement of it and <laughs> his opposite number but uh, he was on an offside position he's on an offside position <laughs> now we have a situation where the captain Malek El Mahdi telling the team wait let's slow it down a bit let's slow it down a bit there's no rush let's slow it down let's get it right and they've opted to go for points who's the kicker Ernest who's going for this one I think the kicking options for, for Tunisia, are, they have very good kicking options. There's uh, Mohamed Riahi uh, uh, who kicks uh, off the penalties. But then I think this kick will be taken by uh, Ayman yes, Amdai who uh, is good off the, off the kicking tee. But it's a long shot for points, just about uh, similar to what uh, Fred Mutonga had. So the wingers are sizing themselves up uh, in going for no points. Water, so no water, no water, this time no uh, Ayman Amdai could, uh, could, could have, could, yeah, you could see he's tossing up the grass. Uh, accounting for the wind and the placement of the ball looks good to me so I'm now let's see how much power he will be able to drive through his legs from his uh, from his hip area through the knees and through the legs to extend Zambia's to extend Tunisia's lead to more than uh, to more than 10 points Amen Amdui gives it a good hit and the flags go up. It's a 50 meter kick by Amen Amdui for Tunisia to extend the lead to 20 
eight to 20 points to eight against Zambia. What a kick. That was a very brilliant kick. Heavy, heavy, but um, as you've seen, eh, he's not one to shy off the leg day at the gym and his practice sessions at the pitch. So Tunisia take a 20-point lead against Zambia with less than five minutes to play into this half. Less than five minutes to play. There's a reset which was collected well by was collected well by Tunisia and of uh, the very own Ali Jlasi. Ali Jlasi is able to collect the ball and get a box kick out of it. Uh, they're getting out of danger into into the Zambia half. The ball goes backwards. Ball goes backwards and uh, they'll be trying to ensure that they clear off and off his feet. Off his feet. It's an infringement. It's an infringement by Zambia and it's a penalty. It's, they've been penalized for that and it's a Tunisia possession going into this Honest. Uh, very good exit kick by, very good exit kick by uh, Ali Lassi to to set Tunisia on the chest and a good chest there to pin to pin uh, Redson Luquesa. He gets the offload away, but the se the rack that the breakdown secured there by Tunisia, uh, Kasi Dichate was a judge to have flown into into the breakdown and sealed off the contest by the Tunisians. And Adam Grammy, in uh, who has not been very busy today, the fullback uh, finds some touch just outside the the Zambia the Zambia 22 for Mohamed Azozi. Uh, to, to win that line out. It's too far away for them to attempt the driving mall, but uh, let's see what uh, strategy they will opt for when attacking in this zone. So what's going on? Yeah, no, but we can play. We can play. Mohamed Azozi to throw, uh, looks right handed, throws a ball that sells a wide uh, to the side of the Zambians, lost uh, forward in the air. And the Zambians, the advantage that they had of that kick, they've kicked it away off the line out, they kicked it away. And now, Mohamed uh, Usama Baya can carry uh, Tunisia forward with, uh, with that carry on the counter attack onto Mohamed Ben Yed Yusuf, who offloads the ball out wide to Behadina Bid, the eighth man. And now, slow ball for Mohamed Ali Lassi. Ball has been put to the foot by Malik El Madi. And very, very well fielded by Redson Luquesa to send Tunisia back inside inside their half. But they will counter-attack this time through their forwards with Usama Baya on another strong carry brought down yet just at his 10-meter line. Mohamed Riahi now sends a huge up and under for Redson Luquesa, whose hands are sure, and he even has a bit of an entertaining sidestep. And now Zambia on the counter-attack through Fred Mutonga, who offloads the ball to his scrum off. Kelvin Sichula and now the pack can get to play. Very good offload in contact. And then there's dancing there by Kasi Dichate into the halfway line. And Zambia are playing advantage for that high tackle. Very good flow of the ball. Zambia keep possession, keep moving forward. They know very well they're playing advantage, so they can keep pushing, keep pushing. Ah, talent Gandiwa, the center referee, sees that there's not much of an advantage and he calls it back to where the infringement was done of the high tackle. Zambia looking poised and well composed and they start with the tap in tap and go and they've gone uh, very good flow of the ball very good flow the eighth there uh, miracle simpasa with a very good ball carry and uh, his counterpart right there kelvin situla always there to ensure he collects a very smart kick right there and a very good follow through of it I'm not sure what the referee is going to call. <laughs> he was attacking. No, nope, but it's a, the, the infringement is by Tunisia. So it's a, it's a Zambia ball. And they go into... I, I believe that was a high tackle. If I'm not wrong. And I'm also not sure whether Tunisia were 10. They're playing advantage, yes. They're playing advantage. Ball has been picked and put backwards. I'm not sure whether the other player had seen it. Go. They try to push again. They're held. They're held. They held Don't Tunisia, the Tunisia holding, holding it well. Zambia very smart and push it all the way out. And it's a very, ah, not a very smart, not a very smart hold on to the ball. But uh, Zambia are smart enough to know that they were playing uh, advantage with uh, Kelvin Sichulak going straight to await the mark being set by talent Gandiwa Ernest. It all started with that grabber kick uh, from, from, from the fullback, Redson, uh, Redson, uh, 
as they now again do a quick restart. But that grabber kick isolated wing, isolated the winger who had no no players at the back, and Tunisia are penalised for entering through the side. And then another subsequent penalty from which this advantage has 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 been played uh, for Tunisians trying to slow down the ball, but doing so illegally. And now Zambia are knocking at their door with another advantage. A very quick press catches the back uh, the backs. Uh, behind the gain line and the cross kick there by a cross, a cross kick there Come by on. inside center Chileshe Mulenga Come the captain uh, has uh, no gain in advantage and uh, this time Talen Gandiwa will be sending a warning to the Tunisians uh, that the repeated infringement is not something uh, that he would like to see as we go into the last play of this half and Noreen Liosi is uh, making some consultation to Talen Gandiwa who will surely have a word for, for the captain for that high tackle Let's see, do, do Zambia go for the line-out or do they go for the quick tap? They elect to go for the quick tap through the hooker, Lukundo Silwamba. Well-secured ball there, but a bit slow. And now, on to eighth man, Miraku Simpasa. He's held up, but manages to find the floor there. And another ball back to Lukundo Silwamba. He's making very many strong carries for, for the Tunisians, working hard, the young hooker there. And then now out to... The open side and the ball has been lost forward there. Very strong defense by uh, by the Tunisians for the last play of the half to conclude this one at 20 to 8. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a very tactical first half. Uh, uh, Zambia were not as clinical in the first few minutes with Tunisia getting placement of it. But then later on, uh, later on we had uh, a twist of it uh, whereby Zambia also got their footing. As it stands, as we go into the break, ladies and gentlemen, this is match day two, game number two, placement fixture that ends with Tunisia 20, Zambia 8. Catch you in the second half.
at half time tunisia are one leg in the finals of the fifth place playoff they are leading with 20 points to eight against zambia what a game they have displayed in the first half having an opportunity to go over the whitewash twice and also having their conversions and penalties well uh, taken up to the 40th minute and just remember tunisia lost against uh, zimbabwe in the quarterfinals and it was a close one 26 14 but right now uh, they are leading here at the nyayo national stadium uh, then talking about this game that has just gone into halftime i'm now being joined by alex njue who is now helping me analyze and put into perspective the first 40 minutes that has gone down. Alex, what a game Tunisia has displayed. We talked about them losing narrowly and now they are here to just take the key points, clear the lines and have a chance of finishing in a respectable position in this tournament. Uh, by leading the match, uh it, it actually means that uh, Tunisia is just two tries and two conversions away yeah. from uh, Zambia. Yeah. And uh, if you can look at uh, the, the previous match Tunisia played against Zimbabwe, mm. you can also predict that uh, this coming half is going to be problematic for the side uh, in terms of uh, fatigue creeping in. And uh, that, that, that might be the best chance for Zambia yeah. to get back to this game. And then we've seen uh, Zambia has really tried to attack, but the defense line for Tunisia has become a problem for them. If Z Zambia are to come back to, into this game and maybe get that golden ticket of playing the final against Uganda later on, what should they do? Uh, for Zambia, I think they should just keep it cool and uh, make the most out of the chances they get here, especially the penalties they were awarded against Tunisia were very crucial if they could just convert them into points. Uh, but again, uh, if the players felt that it was best for them to, to restart the game, uh, then I think, uh, I don't know. Uh, but uh, Zambia, Zambia has, has the actually equal chances to Tunisia in the game. And then just looking at the tackles that they've had and then now the offloads for Uganda. It was a good one up to this particular point. And then there they had, they went over the whitewash. A good play by Zambia up to that particular point. Uh, I can say the try was out of the, the player's personal decision mm. to go for the try. Because uh, as you can see, the guy had options both in and out, but did not commit the ball. He, he instead took the option to go and just score the try. And then just looking at the line out here is uh, Tunisia having uh, their move and also calculating uh, just how to release the ball. Look at how they pushed Z Zambia, the power up to the uh, making it a try over there. Uh, for Tunisia to, to make a 40 meter line out, and be able to form a mall and push it all the way to the try box of Zambia uh, means that Zambia's defense has a, has a lot of work to do in this second half. Yeah, and then, uh, as even as we lo uh, even as we look at now the conversions, they've played a key uh, role in this tournament. Remember, Zimbabwe had their key man, the fly half, having each and every conversion right in this uh, game here. Each and every conversion they've taken, they've had a good one. Uh, enjoy. Uh, the conversions are as, as crucial as the tries themselves. Yeah. But uh, again, Zambia. Mm. Zambia had more penalties. And if they could just have a good kicker, uh, maybe the scores could be otherwise right now. And then we're getting into the second half. What is your expectation? Do you still uh, stand with the team that will be clinical, will carry the day, or you still believing that Tunisia is too good for Zambia? The lead itself is very, very crucial for the team that's ahead. And uh, Tunisia will just try to come back stronger than they played in the first half, knowing that uh, they have the chance to finish fifth in this tournament. There you have it, Alex Njue, just looking at Tunisia having an upper hand as far as the first half is concerned. They are leading 20 points to 8 and they are here to fight for a chance to face Uganda who had earlier qualified having beaten Cote d'Ivoire. We're taking a break. When we come back, state the second half 
of Tunisia versus Zambia, and this is under 20 Batis Trophy in Nairobi. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are back for the second half of this fixture, pitting uh, the Tunisia team going against the Zambia. This cause, as it stands, uh, we have a scenario where Tunisia are leading by 20 points against uh, Zambia's eight. Right in our camera, that's Mohamed Ali Jlasi and uh, Almien Hamdoui, who's been very instrumental, especially with the kicks. The kickoff for this one will be moving from uh, Mohamed Riahi from the Tunisia side heading towards uh, the Zambia Ready? side. Ready? Ready? Expecting All a gruesome uh, second half. Uh, don't forget this is not a cup fixture, but it's a placement fixture. The next match will be a semi-final. Very good kick by Riahi. And uh, I'm not sure how it was collected. There was an infringement right there by uh, Tunisia. And it's an opportunity for Zambia to get out of their danger zone. Ernest Akore Birungi, all the way from Kampala, Uganda, is joining me for this commentary. Yeah, good chess by uh, by Tunisia. Very good kick uh, in in some good territory. No, but uh, the regatta uh, to try and, and and contest for that ball in the air was forward uh, by by the chasing by the chasing forward and the ball being lost forward uh, meant that any other player who played it from from Tunisia was going to be offside and that's what happened, uh, giving Zambia a chance with a man down, uh, being attended to by the medics, giving them a chance to to play uh, with a penalty that uh, finds touch step, just at step. the halfway line. So it's a bit of a contest between, between the two teams right from the start. And let's see what comes Why out of this first set piece. Well gathered there by the, by the Zambian forwards and uh, captain uh, and uh, fly half Mila Mulenga who sit into touch deep inside the 22 is well gathered by Ile Sayari who gives a late pass to his fullback, Adem Grammy, but is able to send it out wide. And there will be a call for offside there by, uh, by centre referee Talent Gandiwa. You can see Redson, Redson Luquesa uh, showing a bit of a worried face there after that call has been made. And so the Tunisians have an option for a scrum or a penalty. A scrum at where the ball was kicked from, or a penalty at, uh, uh, at the half at the ball yeah. where the ball landed, it's and they voted for a scrum clear. at the halfway it's line. Not clear. It's the second set piece of the game after not that clear. line out by uh, after that line out by by Zambia. They get to feed the second set piece, which this time is a scrum down. And let's see what they will be able to make. What, how much use they will be able to make of it. Chris. Set. Mohamed Ali Lassi to feed. 
sends it to the back as the Tunisians drive the Tunisian pack of eight drive forward. The ref's hand should be coming out for advantage now. No, it doesn't. And eighth man, uh, Benadina Bid finds his, 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 his number nine. The ball goes out to the midfield and all the way out to Ayman Amdoy who cuts back inside and is carrying well into the Zambia 22. Quick ball out. And now uh, Benadina Habid playing, playing halfback duties. Still driving, there's no gain in territory in that play, but the Tunisians still have possession of the ball. Fullback Adem Grammy is isolated there, and now on to the midfielders. Oh, very good tackle on Captain Maleka Madi, and he loses the ball forward just as they were beginning to make continue to make some progress in attack there. And Captain Malek El Madi, uh, the ball was. Taps slapped out of his hands and it has been judged to have been lost forward uh, in that tackle. Very good tackle on defense there by uh, Miracle Simpasa uh, on the cross cover. Very, very good uh, incisive uh, analytics right there from uh, Ernest all the way from Kampala, Uganda. Ladies and gentlemen, as we go into the first, uh, we are yet to even complete the first five minutes and it's been action on all both sides of the pitch. <laughs> I believe the ball didn't have uh, too much air and <laughs> talent, talent, uh, Gandiwa was shocked uh, that uh, <laughs> um, Kevin Sichula opts to kick out the ball, so he's wondering what call it's a, it's a scrum, <laughs> Kube. It's just reference to how well he was not ready to restart the game yet without very good placement of the ball. And I'm, I'm actually uh, seeing that uh, it's, it's been a change of uh, the scrum, scrum of duties by Uganda. Oh! Tunisia able to overturn, are able to overturn the the scrum, and uh, one player was nearly being taken uh, off his uh, pants, but he's able to hold on to the ball and hold on to his pants to hold on to his body. Very good line break right there. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, all the way, all the way, Usama Bayak, Usama Bayak, after a very good handoff and a, a very good line break by his teammate, Amine Bayak. They were able to get into a very good partnership to get into that try. Uh, I'm looking at Ernest. He's looking at me, wondering how well can he take us through the repeat of that replay. Let's take a look at that again. Let's take a look at that again. Mohamed Riyahi makes that break into the area and a quick ball out to the captain who finds his uh, midfield partner at their battery. And uh, we have Osama Bayer running that short support line on the inside and he's able to receive the ball from Adele Barry uh, for the try to be scored. Easy stuff, quick ball out that uh, finds the Zambian defense stretched out and uh, the gaps opened up in the middle as they were defending uh, all the gaps are wide. Uh, Ernest, is it, is it fair of me to say that uh, it's already too far to be collected back with this uh, conversion attempt looming that uh, we may have an instance where we have a, a Jalassi, uh extending, extending this uh, lead for uh, not even, uh, it's actually Hamdui, Aliem, uh, Aymen Hamdui, extending this lead. If it, the score turns out to be 27-8, that will be 19 points difference. Is it safe for me to say that the game is already out of their hand? And it's not successful, so the scores remain, ladies and gentlemen, 25-8. The two for, uh, supporting referees, uh, that's Zaid Isaacs and Noreen Leos's hands, don't their flags don't go up, so this is just a repeat of how well Bayer was able to storm through over the whitewash. Uh, Ernest. Yeah, the, the rugby scores can be pretty deceptive, to be honest. 25-8 looks like it's a big score, but should Zambia score once, uh, they get to 15, and that's a 10-point game with uh, close to the entire half left to be played. Uh, it's still too too early uh, to de to say that uh, the game is uh, long gone away from, from Zambia after what we saw uh, in the first game between Cote d'Ivoire and Uganda. So Tunisia will need to keep pumping, and Zambia will need to keep fighting to get back into this one. As uh, we get uh, Tunisia on the attack, they will be going for the box kick through Mohamed Alassi who sends a high ball out that is well gathered by in front of the kicker. That is well gathered by Fred Mutonga, but there's an on, infringement for offside the at that breakdown. The chasing man, uh, Usama Baya, was ahead of the kicker when that kick was made, and he needs to stay put okay, uh, when that kick is made, less his offside, Careful. and uh, the infringement okay. uh, has, has caught him. As you can what see you right there, we have Mwale Mulenga 
who I think, uh, if I'm not wrong, did a replacement of the uh, scrum of Kelvin Sichula, who's taken over. And uh, we have uh, right there Peter Mwansa, who's setting up the kicking duties. Uh, Zambia has not been very clinical with their, with their kicking duties. And um, it's something they may need to relook going into uh, the next, their third um, match, which will be take place on Sunday. Uh, as it stands, they'll be playing for the 7-8 uh, playoff uh, position. Uh, but uh, as uh, Anis, my colleague here, has said, it's never, it's never late. It's too early to call a game because, as I said, the change can happen at any moment of this game. So we have the one and only Peter Mwansa taking over kicking duties. Still not happy, Anis, with the placement of the ball. Uh, let's see whether it has the depth and the power coming all the way from around 40 meters. Although, because I'm guessing that's a 10 meter line. So it's 40 meters of a kick. Wind speed of 18 kilometers per hour working against him. Fantastic, fantastic. He had the depth. That was very good. Um, I nearly asked why they didn't use him in the first half. I realized he just joined it a few minutes ago. So the scores, ladies and gentlemen, as it stands, is Tunisia 25, Zambia 11. Tunisia 25, Zambia 11. Honest, we're looking at the remaining 30 or so minutes of this game. As you stated, you cannot call a game and say that it's over, or you cannot call it and say that uh, it's not within reach. As I said, this is rugby. Kickoff of the game has been done, and the ball will play the advantage. It will be, ah, uh, there was a knock. There was a knock at the restart. And ladies and gentlemen, this at the halfway line, slightly, not, not how I'm guessing at the 10, it'll be a Zambia, no, no, it's between the 10 and the 22, is a Zambia possession into a scrum. But as we've seen, Ernest, the Zambia pack is heavy and well set. Ernest, take us through this part. Uh, Tunisia have, have become very aggressive. They've been very aggressive on their restarts. And uh, second time, the chase is good, but the handling of the ball in the air is uh, betraying them. And this always gives, uh, this is the second time it's giving Zambia a chance uh, to attack from, from the scrum down. But you can see that the, the scrum from Tunisia is as aggressive as the chase on the kick. But this time, uh, the ball goes to the boot, and Adam Grammy is able to regather. He's isolated. The ball is lost backwards uh, in that tackle. And uh, Ayman Amda is there to rescue Tunisia, who are defending on their line. Slow ball by Mohamed Alassi. Doesn't go for the box kick, sends it to his number 10, Mohamed Riyahi. And they will be going for touch. But the center referee says. Off. There's an infringement there. Just hold on, time is off. Cost time face. is off. So he's going to be consulting Go. with his assistant referee there at the touchline, Doreen Liosi. No, just a knock on, I'm happy with the knock on. Are you happy with the late tackle there? Are you happy it's not late? It's in time? Okay. Are you happy that we play line out? Okay. Time back on. Just a on playing advantage over. Line out. Time is back on. Line out. No, no, leave, leave the ball, please. No, no. Okay. Many. It's a Zambia line out after that exit kick and well won in the air. After that contest, the ball goes to the midfield. Muila Mulenga running that loop and the ball goes out wide to the winger who beats his opposite man. He has the line beckoning in front of him, kicks uh, a chest that I don't think he would have been able to regather. But the centre referee, uh, Talen Gandiwa, will have a word with the Tunisia captain. Oh, now that repeated infringement. 13, captain. 13. 13. Okay, we're back. We're back. Yeah. Come. Okay, you understand English? Yes, yes. I have two late tackles from your teammates, okay? One on the middle of the park there, and another one there. You talk to your guys now and sort it out. Ball pass, no late tackles, or I'll have to take action. Go talk to your boys. I've had two in a row now. Yeah, Talent Gandiwa has had enough of the repeated infringement by uh, the Tunisian team. Okay. 
says that there was a number of infringements that uh, he wasn't pleased with and he has given them their last warning. The next player to commit that infringement will suddenly be going to the bin. And now Zambia have options to take a penalty uh, close to the left side of the pitch or one that is right in the middle and straight to the uprights. So let's see what option they opt for with the kicking tee already on the pitch for Peter Mwasa who scored, uh, who converted a very, very long and beautiful uh, kick from about 40 meters away. And this one is an easier one right in front of the uprights. He places it well, makes a small toss for to account for the wind direction. And he will be driving this one through the body. Peter Mwansa for his second shot at goal. And he gives it a good hit to continue Zambia's charge and chase for, for this win against Tunisia. It is now 25-14. An easy kick from straight in front of the uprights, about 25 meters away. And the assistant referee's flags go up. And we have a game at our hands coming close to the half hour mark, to the full hour mark. <laughs> As you had, uh, you had stated it, uh, Ernest, that uh, we'll have a scenario where don't call a game, it's not over until it's over. As we see from uh, two kicks by Peter Mwansa, they've been able to reduce by six points the deficit that was already looking so far-fetched. And uh, especially not forgetting that when uh, Tunisia had the opportunity, they were not able to to capitalize on the try they had put. So I'm looking at uh, Jelassi offloading the ball and there's an infringement, there's an infringement. That was a forward pass, that was a forward pass. Not very happy, uh, Adele Bahri not happy with uh, what he had to do with that ball because he would have played would have played way better. Now it's an opportunity for Mwale Chulenga to release the ball very quick into that scrum and the front row and the second row to ensure the ball gets all the way back to the eighth man for the ball to be offloaded out as not forgetting the forwards of Tunisia are very powerful. They're not leaving it to chance. They're right there. Once it's engaged, they engage. So here, let's see how well and you've seen they're already engaging way in advance. Even the referee even notes it to the captain that it's the number three who had gone. Hey, very good line break. Very good run, very good run right there by Chilese Mulenga, who's also the captain, and still an infringement by Tunisia. <laughs> Ernest, I'm looking at it as if it's also right another position which Peter Mwansa can put in another three points. I'll talk to you now. That's a... Uh that's a very strong carry there from uh, the inside ball by Captain Chileshe Mulenga uh, to go just outside the 22. But uh, the player arriving at that breakdown needed to stay on his feet and he's penalized for sealing, for diving at that contest. And I uh, could see the Zambian head coach will be pleased with how his team are chasing in this one and keeping the scoreboard ticking, well knowing that it, when push comes to shove in the very last minutes, it's the conditioning that will make the difference between the two teams. But they need to be there to contest. And Peter Mwansa coming off the bench in the second half, coming off the bench at the start of the second half, has been very instrumental in uh, getting the Zambians on the scoreboard in this one. Let's see how good of a hit he gives this penalty. And as the flags go up, uh, Peter Mwansa is in flying form. One would have wondered uh, the decision uh, for him not to have started the game, but maybe this is the strategy that uh, the Zambians uh, adopted for, and uh, they keep the scoreboard ticking. You had wondered earlier if uh, it's too early to say that Tunisia have won the game, but like I said, they are now within a try, a, a converted try of the game, and uh, to, keep, to give us a close contest. Just one point away. If they score and then they are able to convert, it's just a one-point game, but Zambia are doing well by uh, making use of uh, these opportunities to kick. Thank you very much, Ernest. And uh, as we look at uh, Mohamed Riyahi about to reset the game again from the kickoff, and uh, the, the sail is clearly, the wind is clearly, clearly behind the Zambia uh, 
sail and uh, it's being led by one Peter Mwansak as we go into the reset of it and uh, He's in position ah, very fan. smart play very smart play by Osama Bayak and he takes he he takes and restarts it by himself no, and he loses it for he had all the that strategy Oran. right ladies and gentlemen until the offloading bit. I wish he had gone into Hold contact on. and not released that ball. So Hold here on. we have an instance where Zambia are Hold trying on. to run away from their problems, kicking, the, getting a good boxing, and uh, the ball is at halfway mark, and they're coming. Oh, fantastic, fantastic run right there by Mohamed Zunati, who gets all the way, all the way into the 22, and we have the one and only Mohamed Riahi showing off his soccer skills, and he's lost the ball forward right into contact. And very, he's not happy with himself. Mohamed Riahi was wondering how, as a whole fly half, he ought, he ought to have done it better. But also we give credit to the Zambia team. Uh, and as we, we're looking at it, it's um, 23 minutes to play, and Zambia still keeping momentum. The ball is about to be put into the scrum of by Mwale, Mwale Mulenga. And we've been having very great kicks by Peter Monsa. How do they offload this pressure immediately into this scrum of? Uh, Tunisia have, uh, like we were saying earlier, Tunisia have uh, conceded and then they have come out much stronger uh, after that conceding, well knowing that Zambia will be a bit vulnerable of that kick but then Tunisia's defense has been on point uh, Zambia's defense has been on point to deny them and uh, they are able to exit their territory with a good kick which is returned by which is returned by Adem Grammy uh, by actually by Adele Barry uh, just yeah. exiting his own area it's uh, he was inside his 22 and he exits uh, that zone that dangerous zone where Tunisia do not want Zambia to be playing he exits for a line out just about just inside their own half and uh, Lukundo Silwamba, who has been uh, very, very strong carries, always in the contact zone, uh, will be tasked with uh, throwing this ball. And Zambia have a full man line out. It's an eight man line out. So the ball was charged, uh, charged by uh, the, the Zambians, which uh, makes it a Tunisia ball on this feed, and they go for an eight man line out. But the communication is not the best, and there's no jumper on that lift, which gifts possession to. Zambia and now they can attack through their forwards and there goes Lukundo Silwamba who is putting up a man of the match performance and now Zambia's can be playing on that advantage after an infringement at the breakdown we have Chileshe Mulenga leading from the front as captain earning yet another advantage for the Zambians could see them exerting more pressure on the Tunisians and probably they could take the lead uh, soon in this game but with the, the repeated infringement from Tunisia and playing in a territory where Peter Mansa can call for the tee, it's a very dangerous play there. Move. Yeah. It's a, it's a, I'm looking at the positioning and uh, very clearly you see who has the ball in his hand and is looking for the tee. That's Peter Mansa, who's been perfect. He has had three of three, three of three, and uh, he's put them within nine points when he started kicking. And right now, with eight points difference. He, he added for them nine and points. With an eight points difference, down he's down looking at reducing the deficit down to down five down points. Down there. <laughs> I'm not sure he ought to have thrown the grass while still seated, while still on his knee. But uh, Peter Mwansa is right there. He's kicks, he kicks with the right foot, looking to reduce the deficit from 25 to 17, 25 17 as it stands, to 25 20. With 20 minutes to play. Here is Peter Mwansa. Looking closely at Zaid Isaacs, Zaid Isaacs and Noreen Liosi on how well their flags stay up or they do not move at all. Not, not, not successful. Not successful for Peter Monza. The ball is kicked deep and well collected. And uh, the recipient of that was ahead of. The person who had tapped back it then, back then, into play. Back then, so Tunisia having some relief as they pursue with uh, Ahmed Salmi. Ahmed Salmi pursuing it very smartly and being able to cause an infringement and also a technical issue there. As uh, Tunisia being smart, having not put in much points into the second half, 
they're looking at how well can they capitalize on this. That's the Mohamed Riahi getting a very, very, very good kick into the five meter line of the Zambia's try line. Noreen Liossi, they are looking and ensuring that she had it at the right spot. This we are anticipating as Andes is whispering to me here. He is expecting a very clinical line out being set up by Mohamed Azozi to the jumpers and they create a very fantastic driving mall. So this pressure is on Azozi to ensure that the line out is good. And they collect it smartly and uh, here we go. Here we go. But for the first time, <laughs> there was an obstruction, ladies and gentlemen. And for the first time, they are not able to capitalize on a very near. I think it's the second time they've not been able to capitalize on a very easy collection of a line out and creating a mall going five yards into, five meters into the try line. So we have Peter Mwansak looking for touch, kicks it. Uh, beyond uh, beyond their 22 close close to the 10 yeah, at, the, at, that, at that line out plus driving well Zambia were very smart to get onto the shovers just as the Tunisians were getting down they had already put on the shovel and at that point the props who were ahead the lifters who were ahead of, of, the, of the jumper they were judged to have been forward and obstructed the the Zambians from from defending at that defending at that from making the tackle at that uh, at that ensuing line out and we can see now the line out on uh, the Zambian side is not the that best of them all I'll come back here. No but as Peter Mwansa attempts a turnover he is legal but there's no advantage gained by uh, by the Tunisians after that knock forward on the line out so we'll have a scrum just uh, outside the 22 about <coughs> much closer to the 10 midway there and hopefully Tunisia this time will be able to get their set pieces right but first there's going to be a water break uh, midway through this half uh, with as the clock stops uh, being in Nairobi the green city under the sun uh, even Ernest has to keep a head a cap on his head because the heat the, 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 the weather if it's this hot what about for a player who's running and uh, it gets hotter going closer so no further into the afternoon it's a water break all teams get an opportunity coaches have the time an opportunity to pass word to their players on how well to execute the remaining 17 minutes of this half as it stands the scores are tunisia are leading zambia by 25 to 17. ladies and gentlemen this is the this is march day two having completed march day one on saturday where we had the winners playing for a uh, place okay, in the semi-finals uh, of the BATS uh, Cup 2022, 2022 where the losers were picking up for a position placement uh, game. We had the first match that pitted Cote d'Ivoire against uh, Uganda, which uh, ended by Uganda winning that match. This is the second fixture where we are having Tunisia playing against Zambia where as it stands 25 to Tunisia and 17 to Zambia the next feature the next fixture is expected to be a very heavy fixture because it pits Kenya who are the defending champions and Namibia a team that has always been very good in this fixture who are coming from a 62 win 62 nil win against Cote d'Ivoire and Kenya who are coming from a 54 20 win against Uganda on Saturday uh, yeah, yeah. Then the last fixture of the day will be will pit Zimbabwe versus Madagascar. Uh, if you wish to join us, the matches are taking place at the Nyayo National Stadium yeah, in yeah, Nairobi. Yeah, yeah, you can yeah. make it for the two o'clock game. You get a double treat as you get to watch that game and also the Zimbabwe versus Madagascar game. Back into the game, we're going back into the scrum which had been called by Talent Gandiwa, the center referee, and. Uh, Clearly, you can see the scrum of <laughs> can see the scrum of there. Mohamed Al Jlasik exchanging some pleasantries with Kelvin Sichulak, 
on the, who is his opposite number, not Kevin Sistula. He was replaced by Mwale Mulenga, who is his opposite number in that position. Tunisiak are able to create happy. a very good no, collection of it, but that it offload of it was not clinical, and the, the player is tackled very well. And oh, no, 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 no. Not, <laughs> not a very smart pick right there. And you have. A very good run by Adem Grammy, who always goes into the ground, and a ball is collected. Uh, I'm not sure whether that's an obstruction, but he went across to Nisiak, keeping hold of the possession. They're going closer into the Zambia's 22. Zambia keeping good defense, while also Tunisia ensuring that uh, the ball is kept flowing. Very good kick. Uh, is it able to be collected? <laughs> it's a high tackle. A tackle. Uh, similar to what a we tackle. had in the first fixture, Ernest, where I was talking about <laughs> a, a player ducking or a yeah, player please. sliding. Yeah, and yeah. you, as the opposing yeah. player, you're the one to ensure his or her safety in the game of rugby. Yeah, World Rugby over the years has been ensuring that player safety is at the top of the game. And you can see that the player... Uh, who ducks, you will need to ensure that the tackle you're making is above shoulder height. And that kick by uh, by Redson Mulengwa is not able to find touch. And uh, Redson Luquesa is not able to find touch. And now Tunisia have yeah. been able to clear their, their red clear, zone. Clear, huh? You can Give see the one. hit, the growing hit is getting the better of them. And we are now entering into the time when the strength and conditioning uh, done by these players is going to begin to show. But first, the line out at two yeah. by... Uh, by Lukundo Silwamba is not is not does not go to his mind and it is turned over by Amin Bayer jumping there at two. And now Tunisia again can exit their half. This time finding touch Time just outside Time the off. 22. Power play flag. Come off. Yeah. So there's some consultation yeah. between Noreen Liosi and Talin Gandiwa. Okay. On the head. So you have number four, falling on the ground, falling to play on the ground, direct on the head. Um, so head contact there, as a foul play. Happy with the foul play. If you tell what you're telling me is a foul play, um, uh, with high degree, what is the degree of danger? Medium. So you happy with the yellow card? Okay, for number four, black diving. Okay. Captain number four. Captain number four. Zambia number four number is four being number called four. in. And number four. And that's Daniel Havasimba. Havasimbi with his captain. Okay, Some I'm consultation a foul play after the referees. Okay. There's foul you play, the play on the ground, by Daniel Havasimbi. To the head. Okay. It's Some it's contact it's to the head. It's not a high degree of danger. It's a medium degree of danger. And it's a yellow card. Okay. And it's going to be a yellow card offense. Okay, committed by after. Daniel Habasimbi for safety. There's contact to the head at that breakdown. And Habasimbi is going to be spending the next 10 minutes of the game in the sin bin. And you can see uh, the, the disappointment on his face as he marches to the sin bin. And it's now a penalty for, for Tunisia. Well, what was supposed to have been a line out? Yeah, it's quite, quite unfortunate. You can see. <laughs> The, the look in the player's face. He's not happy with himself. He's not happy with the outcome. But uh, safety, as we have talked about, it's safety comes first in the game of rugby. They fail to find touch. And uh, the ball is picked up very well by uh, Mwale Bulenga, who, reads, who releases it to Reds on Lukwesak. And uh, you, uh, Zambia, <laughs> I'm still interpreting the Uganda game. Zambia able to get out of uh, danger. But uh, as they're looking at, there's a captain. Very good. In and out step. Very good. Very good. In and out step. Came from the side by the referee. Figures it wasn't really much hold on, hold on. off. But uh, they're able to secure. And uh, here is Zambia pushing on. Going into and is playing advantage. There's a high tackle right there. And uh, uh, Zambia pushing on, pushing on. Going into contact. Very good release. And uh, the player, <laughs> player, player was not really comfortable with the ball. That's uh, in the number one right there, Seku, Seku Ibrahim. But uh, as we can see, Talent Gandiwa takes the ball all the way back, all the way back to where there's an infringement of the high tackle for tackle Zambia to hold on to it. Uh, Ernest, is this uh, Peter Mwansa moment one more time? Yeah. 
Yeah, surely this is it because that's the, the place where he scored his first penalty from about 40 meters on a straight line distance, but uh, it could go up to 46 meters uh, uh, direct to the poles. The first penalty was just at that cross, uh, the 10 meter line. But Peter Maso has been having a good, a good kicking game, only missed one penalty. If he converts this one, it's surely game on uh, between uh, Tunisia and Zambia. Zambia uh, will be looking to run down the clock. The scene been clocked. That's now at eight minutes. We'll be looking to run down the clock, and this is one of those opportunities. If Peter Mwasa can uh, can steal about a minute of that played? time and he converts it, then another played? maybe ten seconds okay. or so to delay the restart. The and uh, slowly by slowly they crow back into this game, but then they do not get to feel the disadvantage of that yellow card. And like he did in the first game, gives it a good hit. Peter Mwansa converts that penalty to bring to, to bring Zambia to within five points of the Tunisians. A very good kick like he had the first time. This is surely his zone, Peter Mwansa. Honest, uh, I cannot be more clearer than how you've stated it. He's been very clear looking at uh, Zaide Sachs and uh, Noreen Liosi taking their flags up. Just cements on okay, how okay, well, okay. on okay. how good instrumental okay, okay. Peter Mwansa has been to the Zambia team in this second half. It's now 25 for Tunisia going against Zambia, who are now within a five-point uh, difference. Very good collection, very good collection of the ball by Frederick Musonda. And uh, right there, we have uh, um, Mole Mulenga uh, enabling for a very good kick. And uh, the ball is kicked into the... Tunisia half and they're able to send it all the way back. A very good line break, very good line break right there by the Tunisians. They've secured the ball. And they're at the halfway point. The ball here is a very good collection of it. Not the smartest of passes, but it serves its purpose. Here is Tunisia. Here is Tunisia going all the way in. Those are the ball was lost. Is lost for Oh, here is uh, Zambia trying to recollect it and. Uh, Talent Gandiwa realizing okay, that uh, on, there was not much of an advantage Sorry? with that uh, knock on. Black. Ladies and gentlemen, the next match pitting Kenya versus Namibia is scheduled to take place at 1400 hours. Wherever you are in this city, if you're able to make it for that okay, fixture, start. it's within the next one hour. Get, get yourself get into here. any way of getting here, you can use a Boda Boda, you can use a Matatu, you can use a Nuba, you can use any form of a taxi. You can use your fit if you're within the Nairobi West, South Bay, South Sea, Langata region, and just walk all this way. If you're in town and you have a break from your bosses and you've been told you can take the afternoon off, just make out, make your way all the way to Nyayo Stadium to support the Kenya under 20 team as they take on Namibia. Sin bin time still stands at 5 minutes 40 with almost 9 minutes to play of this fixture. Namibia, uh, Tunisia, who've been very great within the first half. There's been a whole, they've been a whole reset. have been a whole reset in this second half. Courtesy of the one and only Peter Mwansa. Ernest, what's your take going into this, considering this is a, a Mohamed Al Ali Jalasi, uh, scrum. He's about to put it in, and they have a very strong forward. A very, there you can see it. There you can see it. And they are trying to move push back, back, all the way. Back. They decide not to take advantage of it. He's tackled, and they're clearing it. So uh, possession remains with Tunisia right outside the Zambia 22. A very strong scrum from Tunisia and uh, being able to score to secure that ball but they are playing behind the game line this is in a, in a in a time where they lost where they lost the game against zimbabwe and they will need to continue to keep the scoreboard ticking lest the zambians can steal this game away from them and we see there benadina bid uh, putting putting them on the front foot there with his carry as we continue to pound again and also amabaya try scorer uh, making a strong carry, but the players supporting him will need to stay on their feet to secure that breakdown. And uh, Zambia, oh, a bit uncharacteristic. Uh, instead of going for touch, uh, they opt to do a quick tap and send a high ball out straight to the middle for Adam Grammy to regather. And he will be looking for that touch point, for, for that touch kick, which he does successfully for a Zambia line now just... Uh, of the of the halfway line uh, that's uh, with the kick that's a Del Barry 
with the kick there, wa watching the backfield uh, a bit more cautiously, uh, yeah. knowing that uh, yeah. Zambia have kickers who kick it very, very deep Let's go. at this Mark. point. Mark off. Let's go. Get everyone. Get everyone. Kudo Silwamba to feed, uh, to throw in this line out. Uh, Zambia go full uh, eight man line out. And uh, this time he m throws a good ball. But then there's a player taken in the air. In the hands. Uh, Mohamed Kadani takes a player in the air. And so that gives uh, Zambia a penalty. And they do a quick tap all the way out to the wing for a reset at the halfway line. Fullback Redson Luquesa finds some space on the blind side to continue Zambia's advancement. And now, slow ball out to the three forwards in that pod led by Thank you. Cassidy Chate. Another slow ball for Mwale Mulenga onto the backs. And now, Lukundo Silwamba caught behind the gain line, but the rack is well secured. Onto the backs. Now the captain, Chileshe Mulenga, dancing his way around the, the Tunisian defense. is brought down by Mohamed Salah Ben Reb. And now Mwale Mulenga. Again, another strong carry by the Zambians in the middle quarter there by that pod of three. Peter Mwansa this time opting to put the ball to the boot. He finds some touch, finds some grass, but not touch. And you. there's an infringement there. No, no, no. <laughs> you later could they. Possession is um, still in the hands of the Tunisians for a late <laughs> tackle by, I there was no by Fred Mutonga. I just thought everyone just went back. We'll take another look at that. No, no, it's, it's late. No, no. This is a penalty. Fred no, Mutonga not being a very uh, sportsman like uh, taking out <laughs> an opposite number when he was he had already offloaded the ball. But I'm guessing he had he seen that he had the momentum and he had the desire to tackle, so he figured he must complete a tackle, irrespective of whether it was right or wrong. But yes, as per the rule book, it was very wrong, which eases off the pressure on Tunisia, who were looking at cementing their lead, not forgetting that they lost their match against Zimbabwe. They lost by one point, and all this took place within the last three minutes of that fixture on Saturday this past week. So, ladies and gentlemen, how well do they keep their composure? Looking at Zambia, who have 1 minute 16 seconds to get back into the 15 that they were as they have one person in the sin bin. Not sure that was straight, but the placement, I think talent was not well placed here. If he was where I was seated, <laughs> which is not correctly where he would be, but you'll have seen that that was not a straight, not a straight, but it was a very good line out. Tunisia pushing, pushing. They've lost, they've lost the ball uh, forward. Zambia holding their ground very well. And it's, I'm, I'm happy with them. Within the next 40 seconds, they'll be 15 to 15 with four minutes to play. What does Zambia need to do to take the win? What does Tunisia need to do to ensure they maintain their win? Zambia have done well uh, to manage this time to man to manage the game. Now it's all about game management from both sides. Zambia have done well to 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 wind the clock down as they wait uh, just 20 more seconds to get back to full complement. Tunisia have not taken advantage of that, taken maximum use of that man advantage that they had, and so now this is the time which hurts Tunisia. It hurt Tunisia in the first game, but let's see if they are able to hold on to the game. It's all about game management in this one. How much can they hold on? But we can see Redson, Redson Luquesa making inroads. In, this, in the Tunisian defense, but there's very smart defending there by E.S. Ayari to tackle him and then pull his foot a bit into touch, which means that it will be a Tunisian line-out. They get it. Uh, just look at that curry by Rickson Luquesa, breaks the first tackle, sells a dummy on the second one and goes all the way, but it's tackled by, by Adele Barry, who drags his foot into touch. And, uh, and Tunisia survived that one. They get the line out throw, but that's not a straight ball there by uh, Mohamed Azozi. And now Zambia have an option to go for a line out or go for a scrum. Advantage as Zambia going into the last two minutes of this play. They opt for a scrum down uh, from, uh, from the play. Don't forget, right now, there is no one in the scene being. Both teams are 15-15 apiece. So 
ladies and gentlemen, how do Zambia, not forgetting, the Tunisia scrum is much well trained, it's well set. They have more power in them, especially that front row that has a uh, Tatak, Azozi, and Bayer. But with that infringement, ladies and gentlemen, now it's time for Mwale Mulengak to place in the ball into the scrum. But uh, uh, Talent Gandiwa, the center referee, realizes that the ball is not well set and they, there's, not there's no stability in that scrum. So there's a whole reset being done. They have to do a reset to get it right. Let's look at how well they handled this one. Tunisia looking to maintain that five-point lead. Zambia looking at how well can they be able to equal and even, if possible, get the win from this game. It's an eighth-man pick attempt, but it's lost. It's lost on the ground. Tunisia, as I'd said, they had better power going into that scrum. Ernest, going into the last one minute, 20 seconds. What's your take? Come. Tunisia have been... Uh, Living on borrowed time, I could say, uh, surviving uh, time and time again. But they are holding on. It's just the last minute of play. They need to secure this breakdown and hold on to the ball for just about 40 seconds. The scrum will keep the, the clock ticking. They will set it as slow as they possibly can. But once they win this ball, the first option would be to we listen to the hooter. And once that hooter has gone, they will kick the ball into touch. Uh, but also... They can uh, choose to send the baller wide uh, into the Zambian, deep into the Zambian territory and defend from that zone. But let's see if they will have a scrum as strong as they did the first time. Zambia this time attacking and it again it has been lost forward. So we can see an exchange in there by both teams. It's a scrum down. Trying to assert their dominance at the scrum. Eighthman, uh, Behadin Abid not happy with the call. And Talin Gandiwa has turned over position to the Zambians in the very, very last play of this game. Zambia need to score to level matters and hope that Peter Masa will convert so that they can take the game and uh, play against Uganda in, in the placement final. This is a, it's a tale of two, uh, two scrums, not forgetting that uh, Zambia had just lost the previous scrum, but then this one, they looked deep inside them and were able to figure how well do they get the pressure, how well do they get the poise, how well do they get the momentum to push the Tunisia scrum, which has been heavy the whole afternoon. There's been very clinical in how well they've been executing, and now Zambia have the opportunity of maintaining the hold of this. The ball is, ball is out, and they've lost again the possession. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, um, if I'm not wrong, this is full time. I'm looking at uh, Mohamed Ali Jilasi. This is Mohamed Ali Jilasi, and it's a repeat. Uh, Talent Gandiwa, the center referee, signals for a repeat. Not a repeat, but another scrum, not a repeat. The ball is now a Tunisia ball. Mohamed Ali Jilasi with an opportunity of setting yet another scrum and hoping that they do not lose this possession. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Time is out. We are into the last play. Tunisia are looking to hold on to this possession if they're able to get the ball all the way from the front row, second row, all the way to the eighth man, all the flanks. They can be able to kick that ball out. Here you go, here you go. And the ball is with the eighth man. Here's the ball. They do a curry. They've been able to do a curry. I'm not sure that was the smartest of moves, or unless they did not know that the time is up. They maintain possession, they maintain possession. Tunisia have the position. Tunisia have the position. I'm looking at Mohamed Znati okay, alongside uh, Ben Yahya and uh, Haya. The ball has changed hands. This is Zambia. This is Zambia. This is Zambia. This is Zambia. They kick for the... Uh, this. What is going to happen, ladies? <laughs> ball is kicked out. And uh, what does, uh, what does uh, Talent Gandiwa call for? I'm not sure whether Talent Gandiwa, we have the same stopwatch with him. Eh? Uh, Ernest, I feel like uh, Gandiwa has, has a different time because uh, he's the one who's been stopping the game whenever he needed stopping. Maybe hours may be off by a few seconds. So it's a scrum. It's a scrum at the five for Zambia. For Zambia, sorry. For Zambia, who have the opportunity, if they're able to control this scrum and push the ball all the way, they can be able to equal this game. And with a conversion attempt, they can be able to win it at the dagger. 
looking at Zamb Tunisia, who are looking at getting their first win over this weekend. Here comes the ball. Here comes the ball. They've lost it. Ball comes out, and it's Tunisia able to collect it, and they're able to pursue it. They've lost the ball forward. But the time is up. Time is up. Time is up. I'm looking at talent. Yes, sir. It's I'm looking time. at talent. Yeah, it's not time. Talent is time. calling for a penalty. It's calling for a penalty at slightly beyond uh, the 22, going closer to the five. And ladies and gentlemen, it's time. It's time. It's full time. It's full time, ladies and gentlemen. It's full time, full time, full time. Peter Mwansa was able to make some push with the second half for Zambia. Whereas Tunisia did their best to maintain, they only were able to get one score into it. Zambia were able to collect a lot of points, but as it stands, and at the end, at the end of this uh, match, we have the full-time scores, uh, ladies and gentlemen, with Tunisia taking this fixture 25 against Zambia at 20. Tunisia will meeting up with uh, Uganda for the fifth sixth playoff on Sunday, whereas Zambia will be taking on Cote d'Ivoire for the 7 and 8 playoff. Ladies and gentlemen, see you at 2 o'clock where Kenya will be taking on Namibia. See you then. The big, big breaking news right now is that Tunisia is going to play Uganda in the fifth place semi-final of the Bates Trophy, having beaten Zambia 25 points to 20 in the second semi-final playoff played here at the Nyayo National Stadium. What a game both sides have shown in the hot sun of Nairobi and at this particular point I'm joined by a Zambia coach who is not a happy man uh, considering that he wanted the boys to finish in a honorable and a good position but this is rugby anything is possible coach welcome and thank you so much for creating time for us this is not the result you expected thank you so much is this the result you expected Obviously, it's not the result that I expected. We expected to win. Uh, my boys went uh, flat out to win today's game. Uh, but obviously, at the end of the day, there need to be one winner. We lost by five points. Uh, we played uh, Tunisia in the uh, tough luck to my boys. Uh, tactically and technically, can you say that you didn't get it right, considering that uh, Tunisia, from the whistle, they went uh, full-blown to the uh, 80th minute? 
Uh, we got the tactics right. Uh, it's just that if you look at my boys, my boys are naturally smaller than uh, the Tunisian guys. Yeah. So the Tunisian guys just capitalized on that, on their weight and everything else. But in terms of play, I don't think they can match us. Yeah. You played well, especially in the second half, pushing. But now, defensively, Tunisia really had uh, a good one for you, and you really had a hard time. Of course, yeah, it was a hard game. We had a hard time to break, uh, to break through the Tunisians. Uh, but uh, when they changed uh, number 10 and number 9 in the second half, uh, the game was uh, a game had improved, and the boys uh, played very well in the second half compared to the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah and then looking at uh, Tunisia and then there was just speculation that there's too much heat, too much sunlight here. Maybe is it that now it turned to your boys because everyone expected Tunisia to maybe lose the concentration like they did against Zimbabwe, having led around 18-14 and then it just changed to 19-18 in the dying minutes of uh, their game in the semi-finals. I think they played their cards right because yeah. they... They scored a lot of tries, like they scored three tries in the first half, and actually that costed us because they won the game in the first half. So we were chasing them from behind. And then finally from you, coach, now you drop to the seventh place, eighth place, a playoff. How are you planning uh, to do this one? I know, of course, if it's bad, you should end in the seventh position. Definitely, we just have to win the last game. Uh, we'd, uh, we've got no choice. We're supposed to have won this one. This one is gone. We've got no choice but to win the last one. I wish you all the best in everything, coach. Thank you, Thank sir. you so much for creating time for us. That is the Zambian coach. They've lost 25 to 20 against Tunisia in the second semi-final uh, fifth place playoff that has just uh, come to an end. And now joining me is the winning coach, actually the team manager of the winning coach here with us. Uh, TM, thank you so much for creating time for us. Congratulations. You are going to face Uganda. How was this game? It's a very difficult game. Uh, we are defended uh, our game uh, until this last minute. Uh, good uh, game with uh, Zambia. Uh, felicitations from Zambia. They have a good team. Uh, we have after our uh, lose uh, la last game with Zimbabwe in the finally in the last uh, minutes or in points. We have now the revenge to go to the fifth place because our place is in the fourth place, but uh, next year. Losing the semi-finals to Zimbabwe by a point, it was very heartbreaking going into this match. Yeah, that's why in the finish the players uh, j just uh, to g have the game to finish quickly and uh, take the score in the finish. Yes. Yeah, and then now looking at where you are and also the heat here. Maybe will the sun affect you come on Sunday when now you'll be playing Uganda? Consider Uganda are coming from this region. Yes, there is the heat and last time we talked with the coach he said uh, there was too much heat here. That's why the boys lost concentration against Zimbabwe. If you play Uganda, do you think a similar situation can happen to you guys or now you've uh, climatized with the weather and you're good to go? Uh, we have not another solution now. Uh, we can uh, with uh, this uh, tournament. Uh, we we know Uganda. Uganda now Tunisia uh, is uh, not strange. Yeah. Uh, we play for the first uh, five uh, place. Yeah. Uh, our challenge to go to the fifth place to uh, win Uganda here. Uh, the weather yes, but our players now don't. Uh, Think now weather now altitude. We think to win the next game and go to the fifth uh, place. Uganda are also saying that they are ready for you guys, considering that they've also won their game against Cote d'Ivoire. It's going to be a difficult game. Yes, a difficult goal, but uh, we are uh, here. We are uh, we are here to win, uh, and uh, the best will win. Thank you so much, Thank TM, you. for creating time for us. Uh, there you have it, uh, the Tunisia uh, team manager talking to us about the team, uh, their performance, and everything that they have done to just make sure that they win their second game and also the second semi-final against Zambia. And then right now, right here, this afternoon, 
the big one. It's going to be a rematch of the 2019 Bates Cup trophy where Kenya plays Namibia. And there are the team play, re, training right now. Namibia team are on the ground warming for the big one, which will be kicking off at 2 p.m. It's Chipu versus Namibia, a big game that everyone has been waiting for. This is one of the games that you should miss. Kenya versus Namibia. Remember, in 2019, at the KCP Sports Club, it was a final like no other. There wasn't COVID, there wasn't any restriction. Namibia came out firing at all cylinders, and so was Kenya. And then at full time, Kenya dramatically won it 20 points to 18. I talked with the Namibia coach and also the technical team and some of the players, they're saying that the memories of 2019 are fresh on their mind. But remember, Kenya are the defending champions, having won it last year and also in 2019. In 2020, the Bates Trophy wasn't held due to the COVID-19 that made everything come to a halt. And they're saying that to whom much is given, equally much, much more is expected. They want to go out there, represent the country, and get a chance. And now I rope in Alex Njue to just take... We are taking a short break, actually, and we will be coming back to talk about this game.